classes in C++ are very powerful and flexible. This is the fundamental unit of object-oriented programming. Here I have a working copy of class.cpp from chapter four of the exercise files. This is an example of a very simple class. It holds a simple value and provides an interface to set and get that value. You'll notice on line six, I have the keyword class, followed by the name of the class, followed by the definition itself inside those curly braces and a semicolon there after the closing curly brace on line 11. Members inside a class default to private. And so this is exactly the same as if I had typed the private keyword here. And so this data member, this integer is private. That means that I cannot access it from outside of an object. I can only access it from methods that are part of the class itself. And then in the public section, I have some methods or some member functions. And these are used for setting the value and getting the value. Now, it's also possible to have member functions in the private section. I could put something here and I could say, and now I have a member function, which is only accessible from inside of the class. And so one of these other member functions could call it, but I couldn't call it from outside from the part of the code that uses the object. Likewise, if I want to, I could take the data member and make it public. And by making it public, this is now directly accessible from outside. So instead of saying object get value, I could simply say object I and get the result. But when I take that data member and I move it into the private section, even without this private label, because the class defaults to private, now that I is no longer valid, this I is a private member of class one. And so I need to use the getter instead. The data members do not need to be before the code. I can take that and I can move it down here and it will still work the same. And sometimes you'll see it done that way. In this case, you need both these public and private labels. We'll move that back. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this private label out because this is the way I normally do it. You'll see it done all these different ways. Normally it's considered best practice to separate the interface and the implementation. And what that means is that outside of the class definition, you would have the class methods and you would simply have declarations for them inside. And so I would have a declaration here, which would look like that. And then I would have the implementation out here. And that looks like this. And then I could do the same thing for get value. And so now I simply have declarations for the methods inside of the class definition. And I have the actual methods outside of the class definition. And you notice because they have this class label here before the name of the method, that makes them part of the class. Now, normally these three parts would be in three separate files. We would have the class definition here, everything from line six to line 11. We would have that inside of one file, usually a header file. And then we would have these class methods in a separate implementation file. And then the code that actually uses the class, that would be in another file altogether. So normally there would be at least three files here. And this first part, the class definition is often called the interface. So you have interface implementation and usage. And those would be in three separate different files. Once your code gets to be more than a few lines, it's actually a lot more convenient to work with these separate files. And I'll show you some examples of this later in the chapter. For teaching purposes, and as you're learning the basic syntax of C++ classes, it's more convenient to have it all in one file like this. But just know that it's normally in three separate files. So let's just go ahead and build and run this, and you can see it work. Values 47. Here down in the usage, I've defined an integer and I've defined an object. And then I call the set value setter, this set value method here to set the value inside the object to I. And that sets this I inside the object. And then I use the getter get value to read the value from the object and print the value is 47. Just a little terminology here. The definition of the class, this is called the class. When the class is actually used in code and an instance of the class is created, that's called an object. 
And so an instance of a class is called an object, the definition is called the class.